Well, this doesn't sound like Clay Travis's voice, and you are adept there. Way to go, Inspector Gadget. You are right. I am Jason Martin, however, host of the Jason Martin Show, heard on many of these same Fox Sports radio stations on Sunday mornings, and of course, started a large part of my career certainly with this very show on Outkick the Coverage. But Clay Travis, he's actually with us. He surprised his kids with a trip to Orlando. They're going all full amusement park this week, so now I'm jealous as well, even though we went to Universal. Abby and I went to Universal back in February thinking, you know, this might be the last chance we get to do something like this because we're going to we're going to attempt to try and have children and that attempt has been successful, I am here to tell you, but all right, Clay, before we actually talk about you being in Orlando and all this craziness with the Jets and the Chiefs getting the job done and college football, there's a lot. Sports was awesome this weekend. Just so much to talk about, but you're in Orlando, which means you were not at the Titans-Lions game, and on your way out of town, you made sure to do something that, that I saw I saw it pop up on Twitter, and I said, I really want to ask you about this and talk about it because it's important because I'm not sure anybody has had a harder year than these folks. Yeah, well, first of all, uh, we have, we're down in Orlando, um, and I said on Friday's show that we were going to surprise our kids, so we managed to do that. Uh, I've got a 12-year-old, a, a 10-year-old, and a 6-year-old, and we are at Universal Studios. Um, it is open along with Disney World and the other amusement parks down here, so uh, this is the only day this week that I'm going uh, to be on the radio. We've got a best of playing on Christmas, so right off the top here, uh, we're going to dive into the NFL and college football. It was a phenomenal weekend. Uh, we watched a lot of these games from a sports bar uh, at Universal Studios. My kids uh, and I had an uh, amazing time watching all the different games going on uh, from a different kind of venue. Uh, but uh, So early Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays to everybody out there. I hope that you and your crew are having a great start to your week. Uh, but, yeah, we were, ordinarily we would go to uh, the Titans game, right? I'm a season ticket holder. Uh, we go uh, to watch those games every uh, – we've been to, what, six of them, I think, this year. We had tickets for the, uh, for the Lions game. Um, and uh, we surprised the kids, but we didn't plan this trip a long way in advance. So we had tickets for the Lions game. Our tickets, I would have taken my kids. We would have gone and watched. And uh, I decided I wanted to do a small little thing for people out there. Uh, we have a lot of uh, members of the military, a lot of law enforcement who listen to this show and are fans of this show. And so – I went on social media on Sunday and said, hey, uh, anybody out there who uh, is able to go, if you're a law enforcement or uh, a, uh, a, a soldier or a veteran or past or present or whatever, that uh, we would like to give you our tickets. And so we had a lot of people reach out, and uh, I was happy to do that, and I hope uh, the four people who went had a, a good time. They told me that they did, and uh, they certainly got to see a good game. wasn't as interesting of a game necessarily as the uh, the Chiefs game against the Saints or – what I thought was the wildest game maybe of the season, which is the Rams losing to uh, the Jets. And those are both opposite extremes. And really the biggest storyline associated with that is how we went from a situation where you thought maybe, at least possibly, that uh, that Trevor Lawrence is going to be headed to the Jets. So there would at least be some solace, some redemption at the end of the season for the Jets. Instead, Waking up this morning, you're a Jacksonville Jaguar fan. You are feeling really, really good about Trevor Lawrence, assuming your team doesn't do the same thing that the Jets did and end up winning a game that you have no interest in them winning. But you look at the game against uh, uh, the uh, the the seven and seven uh, the Bears, right? Yeah, That's yeah. probably going to be a loss for the Jags, and then certainly. The Jags are going to lose, I would think, to the Colts, who they, uh, who they, the only team they've beaten so far this year. And the Colts are going to need to win that game uh, to either win the AFC South or to uh, to be a wild card team. So, I think the Jags are going to go one and fifteen. They've got the tie break now over the uh, over the Jets, and so congratulations to Jacksonville fans. It looks like Trevor Lawrence is headed to your town. So, if you're Trevor Lawrence, would you rather play in Jacksonville or New York? I think I already know the answer to this question. Well, I mean, I think it, it, it's a good question, and uh, to me, it's based on whether or not you trust the uh, ownership and the uh, the general manager and the executives, right? I mean, the Jets seem to be like they're going to clean house and go and go get, get a brand new coach. To me personally, if you told me I could live in Jacksonville or I could live in New York City, and some people may think this is crazy, I'd rather be in Jacksonville. Weather's better. 
Um, I, I like Jacksonville. It's a good town. I think it's easier to have a normal life in Jacksonville than it is to have a normal life in New York. And I say this as a kid who went to school on the East Coast. I mean, I would rather live in Jacksonville than I would New York. I mean, I choose to live in Nashville instead of New York City. I could live in New York if I wanted to. People have tried to get me to move to New York or L.A. Um, I think there's a lot of places in the middle part of the country, smaller areas, that are a lot of fun to live in. And so, uh, to me, that's not a uh, it's not a difficult call. What about you? Would you rather live in Jacksonville or New York City? Well, I mean, I think now I, I tend to agree, especially if I'm a kid from Georgia. Like, if, I, if I'm if i Trevor Lawrence... Just up the road from, yes. from Clemson. I think it's much less of a cultural change. Now, these guys are all, you know, a lot of them will say football's football because you're in the locker room, you're focused on it all the time, and so the city doesn't matter as much. But, yeah, I think if you're Trevor Lawrence, there's a lot less of a cultural change going from Clemson to Jacksonville than there is Clemson to New York City. Yeah, and look, if he's a superstar, he'll be on TV all the time. All you have to do is look at Zion Williamson and how many Pels games were on TV, even with him being injured. They ended up with, what, I think 29 games that were on national television last season in a franchise that, quite frankly, you haven't heard much from pretty much ever, especially since they got there. Zion changed the it. NFL, There's TV it cameras matter. everywhere. It doesn't matter where you – especially in the NFL, where there's such an obsession with NFL coverage. If anything, uh, you know, Sam Darnold uh, has certainly lived that New York lifestyle, but where there's less media coverage, I would think in Jacksonville it's a little bit easier to have a normal life. Right. Uh, I, I think, you know, you're not getting every word analyzed by as many different people in the media as you would in New York. Um, and so, to me, I, I don't know. I, I don't see that as a tough call. Plus – Jacksonville, at least at times, has been a organization that seems more consistent. Um, you know, maybe, uh, maybe maybe in its belief. I mean, they gave Blake Bortles a long time to prove whether or not mm-hmm. he was the guy, right? And they paid him well even after he wasn't the guy. I don't think that you've seen a situation where Jacksonville has turned the tape pages too quickly on uh, on quarterbacks. So. Uh, I'm not sure, obviously, going to a bad team is never ideal. It would be better if you happened to end up on a, on a decent team, I think, somewhere in the first round. I think Lamar Jackson uh, benefited by going to the Ravens with their culture. I think Josh Allen, who uh, is on fire right now with the Bills, I imagine we'll talk about him a little bit later in the show as well, benefited uh, by going to Buffalo, where it seems like they finally got things moving in the right direction. Uh, but uh, but I, I'm ecstatic if I'm Jacksonville. And by the way, 22-1 and one if I'm the Chiefs on the flip yeah. side, like, uh, you know, one quarterback can change everything. The Chiefs couldn't win anything, and now they look like the new Patriots because of Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, they outlast the Saints. Drew Brees comes back. I wasn't sure he should have come back, but Jameis was actually put on the COVID list on Sunday morning, so he wasn't going to be available. Taysom Hill doesn't need to be available as a quarterback because increasingly by the week you see those flaws and more tape is out there on him, and it wasn't going to continue to go well. But I think the bigger point is just the Chiefs. The Chiefs were my preseason pick to win the Super Bowl, and I'm not patting myself on the back because it's obvious for anybody that that was a smart pick. I picked them over the Saints, as a matter of fact. This game was another one-score game, though, Clay, and that's the only thing that that bothers me a little bit about the Chiefs. But generally speaking, it's teams trying to come from behind to overcome deficits. Yeah, look, the the Chiefs, I, I believe this 100%. If you had to choose right now between every team in the NFL or the Chiefs, uh, I think you go with the Chiefs as the, the favorite to win the Super Bowl. In other words, I would let you have 31 teams right now, uh, and I would uh, I would take the Chiefs. So I think that's where we're headed. I think that's what's going on right now, um, and uh, I think the Chiefs are going to repeat. And 22 and one. I mean, that is just. I mean, that's like what a good NBA team does if they're trying to set an all-time record for wins. That's unheard of. I mean, even in college, going 22-1 and one is almost impossible. And to do it in the NFL, where there is virtually no difference between uh, many of these teams or the point spreads are relatively low, uh, I, it just speaks to how dominant Patrick Mahomes has become. Uh, and I think he is uh, well on his way, as I've been saying for, for, for a couple of years now, um, I think he's the Tom Brady of his generation, except the difference is, unlike Tom Brady who had Peyton Manning, so far there hasn't been anybody who has been proven to be a legitimate rival uh, to Patrick Mahomes for the throne of uh, of the NFL greatest quarterback of his generation. Yeah, well, we didn't see that coming when he was at Texas Tech. 